I gave one of the early machines in that development to the South Carolina State Museum. I'm from South Carolina originally. The man down there, Dr. Ganung, wrote me a letter the other day. He said, Tom, we wanted to demonstrate that machine of yours in connection with something down here. So we had to write to CBS, who has the rights under those Jackie Gleason shows, because it was advertised over their station with the, Boeing, the Buick Company. And they said, yes, you may use the Jackie Gleason shows in connection with that equipment down there, but it'll cost you $100 a minute. I said, you can buy the whole tape for 15 bucks at the store. <laughs> so anyway, uh, that's just a little aside on it, because the early machine was one that we had adapted from Germany. It's the Ariflex, Arnold and Richter Company in Germany makes motion picture right. machines. I went to Germany to get that improved on one of my first trips to Europe in 1955. We developed those machines and converted them from 16 millimeter to 35 millimeter with the help of the Mitchell Company and um, built a set of those and used them in the Adelphi Theater in New York for those 39 shows. I was in the studio for every one of those as my scientist because we wanted to be sure the equipment was working all right. We didn't have to do one single retake on those because they had three cameras running at once. Then the film and the sound would be edited in the final sequence with one of these 16 millimeter ones as a guide what went in the show. Then we built a mobile unit, cost us about a million dollars, with a big vehicle to carry the cameras, and another one for the sound studio, took it to Hollywood to show to the Fox Company and to uh, MGM, all the companies out there said, you ought to do your movies this way. And they said, well, yeah. And Cecil B. DeMille came to me and said, Tom, I'd like to use that machine on my next show, but I want you to do it on widescreen. I said, when is your schedule? three months. I said, we can't get Mitchell to do it fast enough that way. He died the next year, so I didn't get a chance to work with um, Cecil Peter Mill on that one. But the other people said, we've got six shows going on our stages. If we put this machine, which should do it at three times the speed, all those others were going to strike. What about that part of it? Well, that was one of the things that almost killed the electronic cam. Well, the Dumont electronic cam, we took out to Hollywood, and Hollywood said, our union problem with the electronic cam may be a problem. We got into the same problem back in New York trying to sell it. And Jackie Gleason said, I want to buy the principles of that thing from you and use it. We turned him down and said, we'd probably make money out on our own. We'd probably been wise to do that, but uh, we didn't. But then Alan Dumont and I committed to give a lecture on the principles of electronic cam in Chicago at the Stevens Hotel for a convention. So we went up and gave our paper. And then I said, Alan, I've got wind of the fact that there's a demonstration of something or other in two or three rooms that are not on the regular schedule for the convention. They had a big display for equipment, too, as well as the convention um, papers that were being presented. So we're on the corner, and there was Ampex, who greeted Dr. Dumont very warmly. We knew the Ampex people. And they were demonstrating for the first time in that room public demonstration of magnetic tape television in high resolution, black and white. So after a few minutes there, I told Ellen, I said, I think they've got something else planned here. Let's don't interfere. Let's sit in those two seats in the corner. So I went over very quietly and sat down with Ellen. The door opened and in walked David Sarnoff, Ellen Engstrom, and an entourage of about six of the RCA people which Ampex had invited to come see this. They saw for the first time magnetic tape on television in high resolution. And instead of those multiple channel efforts that they had been working on down in Princeton. So um, that, of course, was the knell of the Dumont electronic cam and the advent of, yes, we can record a program and we can edit and still put it on the air right away. This is a cold change in the broadcasting business, not only in the Dumont television operations, but RCA, NBC, CBS, um, the mutual broadcasting, and the all educational the local television stations. people. All the local stations as well. All the stations could now, with not too much expense, buy a machine that would record and hold their programs for posterity. 
Unfortunately, maybe it's being overloaded with videotape. There's too much of it on hand. But anyway, a lot of very important programs are now recorded on mm -hmm. videotape.